Hello everyone, in this video I will try to show you how we can secure our backend API using Spring Security and OWAD2 using the Google Social Login. So I have this front-end application that I built using React and when I try to get some data from our backend in localhost 8080 I get this 401 error which means I don't have the permission. So now I can click this login using Google and I get redirected to this uh, UI and then when I get data this time it works because I used Google to authenticate and I get this message from the backend that contains some information from the account that I used to authenticate like the name and also the picture and I also can log out if I want to and if I try to get some data it won't work so this is basically it and I'll show you how we can do with this. So the first thing we need to see is our POM XML or our backend and we have two important dependencies. So the first one is the Spring Starter Web to build the web application. But the, the second one is the Spring Boot or what to client. And this is the one that uh, will help us to implement the OWA2 logic and you can add this dependency in your project uh, if you already have an existing Spring uh, project or you can just use the Spring Initializer and add it as a dependency it's called OWA2 client and the second thing we need to do is to add what we call the client ID and client secret so we open our application.yaml and we need to provide Spring with the client ID and client secret and you can easily get uh, the client ID and client secret uh, by using the Google API console so you go to this link and you open the Google API console and you need to create a web application like ANOVA2 client ID so I already have this one created and I just take uh, the client ID and the client secret uh, from it if you don't have uh, a know what to client, just create a new one. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing you need to do is to add uh, unauthorized redirect URAs. It should be exactly localhost 8080 login what to called Google. So you need to absolutely have this one uh, in order for the application to work. And you take the client ID and client secret and you put them in the application.yaml okay so before uh, opening the backend code I'll show you the front end code so as you guys can see we have this get data button so this is the get data button this one and it just uh, send it's a fetch API we use the fetch API to send a request to our local host HH hello and we get this data and we uh, display it on the front end. So let's see our uh, back end uh, code. So we only have one class. So this is our main class. And this is the method that uh, we call when we click the button. And it simply create this data object. It's a hash map and add the uh, two fields, text and picture. So when we set, when we use the get data uh, button, we get this object containing text and picture, and we get the name uh, of the of the account that we use to authenticate from this OWA to user principle. It's a principle that gives us all the attribute of the authenticated. Uh, the user so we can get the given name and we can also get uh, the picture and we add it uh, in our data so now in order to secure our uh, backend we need to do uh, multiple things so the first thing we need to do is to obviously extend web security configure adapter and before seeing the configure uh, method we need to see very important thing which is the cross origin resource sharing Obviously, uh, we are using React, and React is hosted on localhost 
3000 and our backend is hosted on localhost HH. So when we try to send our request from the front end to the back end, we will have a cross origin a resource chatting uh, error, course error. So in order to avoid this error, we need to add uh, some configuration. So we use this bin, the course configuration source, and we need to provide the allowed origin, which is HTTP localhost 3, uh, 3000. And we need also to allow set allowed credentials to true. And the reason we do this is because we want to send uh, credentials. And what are these credentials? Uh, it's the session ID that contains uh, in our cookies. So how this authentication works in, uh, in reality. So let me just log out and I'll show you. So right now, uh, I'll go to, uh, to application right and we have uh, these cookies so let me just delete all the cookies okay so how does uh, spring uh, implement security is when uh, spring security is based on by default uh, is based on session id or session based authentication so when we try to get some data uh, we get a session id and xrf token uh, we will talk uh, later about XRF token when we use it, but this is the one that interests us. So right here we have this value, 6167, it's a random value, and this session ID is not working because uh, it's not a valid session ID. So now when uh, we use uh, Google login, <coughs> we get a new uh, session ID, and this one is a valid session ID. So when we <coughs> uh, try to get some data it works so how does this work uh, basically when we send when we click this button get data we include credentials so right here in the fetch api we added this header credentials include which means we want to send with our request uh, our cookies and cookies contain this, just G, this uh, session id that is used by spring to authenticate the user so this is the reason why we add this uh, configuration set allowed credential to true because we want to send our credential uh, to our backend and the question credential as i said is this cookie that contain our session id that uh, used by spring security to make sure that we are the right user right so this is basically uh, this bin and when we use it to avoid the course error and then uh, let's see the second method that we have is uh, the configure method and the first thing we have is the cores obviously and i just talked about uh, the second thing we have is authorize request any request authenticated which means we want all the requests to be authenticated so you cannot make any requests to our backend unless you have uh, unless you are authenticated basically uh, the second thing we have is HTTP exception handling. Uh, by default, Spring Security, uh, when you are not authenticated, it sends uh, a page. We don't want that because we have an API. So we add this uh, HTTP status on tree. So when you are not authenticated or when you don't have the permission, uh, you have a 401 error. And it comes from here. We provided the so when, let me go to the network tab, okay, so when I try to get some data, this is what I get in return, 401, and this is where we told Spring Security to send uh, 401 to the user when he is not authenticated. Okay, so uh, right here is the HTTP over to login, so this is the login, and when we add this method, uh, it's basically create the login uh, logic it's already implemented by uh, by spring security we don't have to manually implement it and we add also this default successful url which means after uh, after the login so if we use the login and it's successful so we use our account and everything just fine we get redirected to localhost uh, 3000 
So this is the why we use this method default six for URL to localhost so 300 and we set the value always used to true. Now we have two the last two lines is HTTP SRF and HTTP logout and just before I'll explain them we need to go to let's click the uh, let's login again and by the way this uh, button login uh, with Google it's simply it's just a link to HTTP localhost 8802 authorization Google this is the default login uh, URA that we should use now let's log in once again and, with, and when we are authenticated and we get our data we get this button logout so logout is a post request to our backend so let's just go to our front end to see so this is the logout function and it's simply a fetch so it's a request to localhost 8080 logout and it's a post request and as we did with uh, the get message we included our credentials but this time we included a header and this header is the xrf token and the reason we add this header is for security concerns because our security is based on cookies and based on session id so we are we are we can be attacked by the crf and, and the way we avoid CRF is by using another uh, cookie or another value in the cookie uh, we call it XRF token so we send this XRF token with the header and we get uh, the XRF token from our cookies so we use this cookies dot get and we get this value right here this uh, XRF token that is unique to the user uh, authenticated so we cannot have like a third party someone trying to use our session id uh, to get uh, some information right so let's go back to the code and we add this http logout basically to create this uh, logout logic so if we don't have uh, http logout this call to the http to localhost hh logout won't work and the reason we add http crf to basically create this token so we use http srf and we use the cookie crf token repository so now we can when we are authenticated we we, uh, we send the session id and we also send this xrf token that we use to send with the request and the reason we add with http only false uh, which means uh, we make our uh, xrf token uh, http only uh, to be false which means we can access it from our front end so the reason we have our http only to be set to false is we can access it from uh, the front end we want to access this XRF token from the front end uh, to basically send that with our request so we add this with HTTP only false uh, header and this is basically it uh, for the app uh, it will work just fine and that's it that's